everyone, and welcome to our show, Obesity Care with Dr. Kanika Yashi. Obesity has become a major health crisis in the growing years. More than a stigma, it has become a threat to us. What is obesity in its truest sense and form? We're going to find out in this show with our expert, Dr. Yashi. Dr. Kanika Yashi is trained in internal and obesity medicine and is American board certified in both specialities. She is currently practicing at Cooperstown, New York, and is a hospitalist as well as practices obesity medicine. She is a skilled educator and researcher and is involved with multiple studies as well as holds important leadership positions with the Obesity Medicine Association and the New York chapter of the American College of Physicians. She also serves as an associate editor for the journal Obesity Pillars. Dr. Yashi is passionate about her practice of obesity medicine and her hobby of cooking, and is in the process of combining the two by making a page for the wholesome Asian meals, especially keeping in mind the nutrients and calories. Welcome to our show, Dr. Yashi. How are you today? I'm very well, Vino. Thank you for having me today on the show. I'm very happy and excited to be here. Um, today, I want to bring our attention of the viewers on the rising rates of obesity, which is almost a pandemic worldwide. And we would also talk a little bit about how it can affect a person's life, whether it's their physical, mental, or social well-being. So thank you for that uh, introduction. And I'm glad you're going to talk about this growing health crisis more. Let me start by asking, why is it important to talk about obesity? Yeah, so like we said, obesity is a growing pandemic. The rates of obesity has risen worldwide. For example, just in the United States, the current rate of obesity is at 40%. That means that four out of 10 people are obese and we are not even considering overweight right now. We are just talking about obesity, which means that their BMI is over 30. So, so that's, that's a lot. Um, seven out of every 10 people in the US are either overweight or obese. So this is now including overweight aspect as well, in addition to obesity. So that's a lot. That just means to say, uh, that just goes on to say that only three out of 10 people are currently at their normal weight. Hmm. So currently, one out of every three college students in America are obese, and the childhood obesity rates are not far behind. It's about 20%. So that means one in every five child that is under the age of 18 are technically falling in the, in the rates of uh, being obese. So that is a lot. Um, as you can see on this image that has been uh, posed to you right now to our viewers, uh, this is the map of the United States and it's been colored differently. Uh, the colors are pretty much to say which states have higher rates of obesity in the US and which have lower rates. So obviously it's not uniform. The darker colors that are the darker orange and the red are the states uh, with higher rates of obesity. And we can see that they are mostly the southern and the central states. Most of the northeastern states and the southwestern states have a little bit lesser rates of obesity. So um, an interesting fact, um, I don't know how many of our viewers know, but um, which is the state with the highest rate of obesity and which is with the lowest rate of obesity? Um, mm -hmm. And it's, that it's Mississippi, which is the state with the highest rate of obesity and Colorado is the one with the uh, lowest rate of obesity. And I did try to research why, yeah, I did try to research why, why is that the case with Colorado? And uh, I really did not find a good answer. Um, I wonder if it's, if it's because it has a very, um, you know, mountainous terrain where people have opportunities to hike right. uh, things like that and venture into outdoor activities. Uh, but I found this fact pretty interesting. Um, currently, U.S. is the 12th most obese country in the world. So, so, so 
problem, you know. And, um, and India, the rates of obesity in India currently are at 20%. So, so that is also a lot. And that is why, I um, mean, you know, it's so important to talk about this uh, issue and uh, kind of um, identify the problems that can occur with it. Um, one other thing, you know, that is important is that even though obesity is so prevalent in our day-to-day -day lives, we don't, we don't always recognize this as a big issue. People don't right. very seriously. Even when we are visiting our doctor's office, we don't always talk about our weight. You know, we are stuck in talking about our sugars, our blood pressure. And, you know, so this is something, you know, is important. It, it's increasing. And that is why we need to talk about it today. And given that most issues do stem for, from your weight, I think it's important to talk about weight when we are going to the doctors. 100%, 100%. And once you are able to get to your right weight, um, automatically, most of these chronic health issues like hypertension, diabetes, they all start to get better. Right, right. So let me ask you this. What are some of the common problems, actually, you see in patients who are obese or overweight? So when a person is obese, it can affect their physical as well as mental well-being. For example, if you are obese, the chances of you having a high blood pressure is 67% more than somebody who is a normal BMI. Chances of having a stroke is 64% higher. Mm. Chances of having heart disease is 50% higher. The chances of having type 2 diabetes is 20 times more than when you are a normal BMI. And we know that it affects people's mental well-being when they are overweight or obese. So the rates of depression are 55% higher in people who are obese. So these are just a few reasons, you know, you know, for why it's important to tackle obesity, but there, are, there, are, there is enough data to suggest that it can cause increased risk in cancer and lung diseases like sleep apnea, yeah. it can cause arthritis, you know, early aging and so forth. So there are a million reasons for why we need to create obesity. I agree with you. Uh, now, your article about rising obesity in the U.S. was published recently in the um, Obesity Medical Association. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, thanks for uh, bringing that. Uh, I'm surprised you know about that. Uh, we have yeah. to know it. <laughs> yes. So this was, I had an opportunity with uh, Obesity Medical Association where they, you know, asked me to write an article and I did. And it was uh, basically talking about the way the rates of obesity have increased in the last uh, decade or two in the United States. And what have been, what are some of the causes that have led to this rise, uh, whether it's environmental factors, social factors, and obviously their own personal factors. Um, and we have also talked about in the article what problems being overweight and obese can cause and what we can do, the steps we can take to tackle this issue. Interesting. I haven't read the whole article, but I will be sure to read it because as you said, it's a concern and I, everyone should know more about obesity. Absolutely. Um, there is a link here, you know, people can actually just, uh, our viewers can go on the link and they can access this article. It's, it's, uh, it's publicly available. Yes, we are going to make sure that our viewers see this article. And Dr. Yashi, next question is, can uh, our viewers check if they're overweight or obese? Right. That's a very interesting question, you know. Uh, there is a way that is called as a body mass index that we use in our day-to-day -day practice to check for obesity or overweight status of a person. Um, and I'll tell the viewers about it just in a second and how to calculate that. But I do want to say that we don't want to get hard-pressed on this or fixated on this one a metric of body mass index because it's not 100% accurate. 
Um, there are other ways to determine a person's um, body fat status or the adipose, adiposity that we call it in medical terminology. Um, for example, the waist hip ratio, um, you know, some people like the, like the bodybuilders, they have a lot of muscle mass, so their BMI usually tends to be on the higher end. Does that mean they are obese? Probably not. Yeah. You know, also, um, also, the BMI for different races and different nationalities um, is, is an ethnicity that is different. For example, the BMI uh, ratios and calculations for Asians are a little bit lesser than the Caucasians. So, so my point is that we should not get hard bent on this BMI figure, but, uh, but for our day-to-day -day, um, usage and day-to-day -day functioning, we do just use the BMI, uh, but we have to take it with a grain of salt. Right. So the way to calculate BMI is really, um, it is weight in kilograms that is divided by height in meter square. So BMI is weight in kilograms divided by height in meter square. Um, and then there are other formulas with the way you can calculate if somebody is doing it in pounds and inches. So for the BMI, a normal BMI is when it is between 18.5 to 24.9. So for a rough, rough numbers, we can just consider less than 25. The overweight status is when the BMI falls between 25 to less than 30. And obesity is when the BMI is more than 30. And a person would be extremely obese or rather classified as being extremely obese if their BMI is more than 40. So this is the way the BMI calculations go. Moving forward, uh, how have the patients benefited from losing weight and how successful were they? So people benefited a lot from losing weight. Um, for most ailments, they say that it is just that 5 to 10% of your body weight that you need to lose to really start seeing the effects and improvement of certain diseases. So, you know, we are not talking about uh, going to, um, you know, how they, they say it out there in a funny way that being size zero or being very lean, you know, we are talking about this healthy weight loss. So, for example, if a person is 80 kilo and they are obese, if they lose just about 10%, 5 to 10%, that is about 4 to 8 kilos of their body weight, they will see an improvement in their blood pressure, diabetes, that is your sugar, as well as cholesterol, your lipid panel. They will see in their liver function tests and many other things like heart, as well as the lung issues, um, all of that they will see a benefit with. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just about losing that five to 10%. How successful were they? Uh, the second part of your question, Neil. Uh, for most people, I think when they start to lose weight or get onto that journey, um, there, there was actually recent study and data which says that for most people who were successful, there, there was a motivating factor. There was something in their life that sort of led them on this path to try to lose weight. Um, I don't know, for example, when there was a time when, um, you know, a few years back when I was almost in the overweight range. For me, my wedding, so I'm, I, I'm guessing probably for most people who were successful, there were some, um, you know, uh, personal social factors. Um, and, and for them being successful is, is the thing is uh, when they try to, um, when they try to lose weight with the aim of uh, doing it for the betterment of their health, most success has been seen in that. You know, mm -hmm. so not for trying to look slim or not right. for, but if they understand the depths of um, the medical benefits, 
then people have been more successful long term. Mm -hmm. So uh, most most of my patients are quite successful. I've seen that. And one funny thing that I have noticed, and there is no data on that, what I've noticed is that once a person starts to lose weight and, you know, four or five months down the line, they're doing really well. Uh, they have lost a few pounds. They have this, you know, this new uh, newfound energy, this new determination where uh, they, they are following their, you know, right kind of diet. They are more motivated. They are yeah. they're doing physical activity. So I've seen that in people you know, as, as a motivating factor once uh, they start to lose a little bit of uh, initial power. I have actually heard that too, because I know that getting to the point of starting working out, exercising can be the hardest thing and actually keeping up with it can be the hardest thing. But I have no noticed and I've like known people who say that once they start working out for a few months, they cannot stop. Like it's a part of their life then. So you know, it's, I think, getting to that part, which is the hardest. Exactly. Yeah. It's about building the right kind of habits, you know, yes. and once you build those habits, um, it becomes, a, it's a part of you. It's a part of your daily routine, uh, but it's, it's really getting to that point. Yes. So Dr. Yoshi, why is obesity considered a stigma? That's something very important that you have raised, Meenal. Um, however, I would like to tell this to our viewers that obesity should not be considered as a stigma. It is a disease. It, it is actually a medical ailment. Right. I want to say that people should not take this personally. It is not about body shaming. It is it is really about getting the right habits so that mm -hmm. we have the right weight and live a healthier life. So unfortunately, there we know that there has been a lot of associated stigma with uh, being overweight and obese, uh, but that is obviously not right. Mm -hmm. um, and the most we can do and we should be doing is to spread awareness about it many people actually suffer from genetic abnormalities that can lead them to put on the weight. And it's not even, it's not even that's something they are doing, you know, or yes. it's sometimes it is familial issues. It, it is, it's just hereditary. Mm -hmm. So many times it is not just a simple answer that eat right and exercise. It is not that it is a complex, disease it involves hormones it involves your age and a lot of other factors that determine the weight a person is at a certain point in their um you know and in, in their life at a certain age so um that's what i'd like to say about it i'd like to add one other point you know when we see patients in our uh, clinic uh, and as healthcare providers we always try to be uh, very mindful and i think we all should be um, we try to use terminologies like heavy patient or patient being on the heavier side um, instead of calling words um, like fat you know those kind mm -hmm. of things. right you end up using the word obese and overweight also because our medical billing and coding is associated with those words so if we do not put those words we can never bill for our encounters uh, but such is the world right now but hopefully mm -hmm. with all the awareness and the education So we are at the end of our episode and I'm having fun talking to you about obesity and its implications. So in the next few episodes, what can we expect more? So um, in the future episodes, we will be diving a little bit more into details about the prevalence of obesity in childhood, as well as teens, young adults, and what steps we can take to reduce obesity in that age group. 
we will be looking at the prevalence uh, and rates of obesity in young moms and how going through uh, the motherhood is a risk factor to being um, obese or to gaining weight. We know that. Um, how it can affect their lives, how it can affect their child's life, what effects it can have on breastfeeding. We will also be talking about obesity and its effects on heart and lungs, as well as mental health and what steps we can take towards that. We will be looking into our dietary patterns um, and maybe talking a little bit about Mediterranean diet, the keto diet, as well as intermittent fasting, um, and seeing whether adopting any of these diets are helpful or how it's helpful in losing weight and being to the, getting to the right weight. We will also talk about the role of physical activity in um, helping us lose weight and what are the right recommendations and what kind of exercise people can pursue given their chronic issues, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so these are our four topics. And we would also be talking about the medical management of obesity. There are newer drugs that are out there. There are surgical options that are out there. Who is a fit for that? Um, so we'll be discussing all of this in our future episodes a little bit more into detail. Thank you so much, Dr. Yoshi, for joining us today. And for our viewers, I hope you guys are watching us on Yup TV and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook channel, Mana TV. I'm your host and I'm hoping you will be coming back with us to watch this eight series episodes called Obesity Care with Dr. Kanika Yashi. Have a great day.